Chicago over the weekend. So mobs of teenagers and young adults and grown adults were all out in the streets at all hours of night clashing with cops near Millennium Park Saturday night. Two teens wounded, one bystander beaten. In fact, they had to have police, if there were the tourists that were in the area, police had to escort them back to their hotels. Why in the hell would you go to Chicago if you're a tourist? Like back in the, like the late 90s, early aughts, it was fine, kind of. I mean, I like Chicago, but why would you go back? Why would the hell would you go? I mean, it, unless you're going to see the crime. I mean, I don't understand what the tourism attraction is. Guys, we're going to go to the number, one of the number one crime capitals in the country. Their DAs don't care. Let's go ahead and let's go see. It's like a field trip. They said the mob erupted in violence, trashing property, smashing windshields, torching cars, attacking one motorist. They beat the hell out of one guy sitting to the hospital. A Hispanic couple. The wife was terrified. She was trying to talk to the press, and she was like, I don't know. They just beat him. He's in a hospital. I don't know. They just beat him. God love her. She was terrified until she was shaking as she was talking to the press. They beat him to the... He was at the wheel, and they just attacked him. And then, there, of course, there was another teenager who had a gun, illegal possession. 16- and 17-year-old got wounded by it. And then there was a 14-year-old boy, boy shot during an outburst of teen violence uh, the day before, there was there was not an arrest or one arrest in that incident. So they had hundreds of teenagers, actually thousands, they said, of teenagers in, in the Chicago Loop around 9 p.m. There was a social media post that called for a meetup near Millennium Park. And they said that they were just fighting and some of them had guns and all. I mean, it was just, at, you know, those damn gun organizations. Right. Isn't that all their fault or something? You, you sitting out somewhere in South Carolina, law-abiding American, innocent. This is your fault, isn't it? Isn't that what we're told? It's a bunch of teenagers. I just see a bu a thousands of kids who need their asses beaten. That's what I see. Where are the parents? Can we beat their ass too? Honestly, that is, you want to know what my, what am I, one of the keystones of my uh, administration would be if I ever ran for president? It is the national beat your ass campaign is what it is. If we see, I'm just saying, like, if you're a bad parent, I feel like we should get to whoop you. If your kids out there doing this, this hoodlum stuff, I feel like we should beat you. Right? You get a whooping. Spare the rod, spoil the child. That's what it is. And then, but to make it worse, check this. This is crazy. So the new mayor-elect, right? The guy who's, can't even believe I'm saying this, worse than Lori Lightfoot. He got mad, Kane. He got mad at all the people who were talking all kinds of, shadiness about these teenagers saying don't demonize them he said it's not constructive to vilify a group of rowdy teens that were torching cars it's so mean to do that he said it was not nice i think we got audio of him saying that it was not nice listen to this this is i can't believe that this is an elected official who says it's bad to criticize teenagers who are actually old enough to criticize them from all of the all of the, the shenanigans, the Ill, the illegality in which they're involved. Listen. So you're not, people you're not are, condoning looting. I'm saying that people are acting out of desperation. We don't want a society that is acting out of desperation. But you have to pay attention to the cries that people have. By so you're, ignoring you're not that, condoning looting. Th th there's no way to, to, to embrace that. What I'm saying is you can't condone the looting that corporations continue to do every single day when they take tax dollars from black, brown, white folks all over the city of Chicago so that they can turn a profit. Golly, I feel like we just accidentally did some math. What did we just hear? How is this? He's like, no, they're desperate. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. I know a little bit about being poor. I grew up broke as hell. I ate gravy and biscuits for days in a row. For a, a, a significant portion of my life, I was raised by a single mom who had a high school education. She worked two and three jobs at factories, everything else. I couldn't afford new clothes. I couldn't afford new shoes. I was the poor kid in my, in my school. I was the poor kid in my class. I was the poor kid from a broken home. And some of the other parents didn't really want their kids talking to me because who knows? Maybe I was a statistic. Who knows? I was a broke kid that came from a broken family that had a history of some stuff. I didn't have, but my family. And I didn't go out and do all this stuff. 
I wouldn't even thought of going and doing this stuff. And I guarantee to you, I was poorer than any of these kids that were riding in Millennium Park could imagine. Whenever anyone sits here and is like, oh, you have it easy, do I? Because I came by everything I own, honestly, and I worked my butt off to get it. Nobody made me, nobody gave it to me. I never did any of this. I can't tell you how many, I, I guess by the national standard, they would, be, they would be at the poverty line, people living in flyover country. I mean, I have family that, you know, live, I got family that live in trailers in the Ozarks. They would be considered at the poverty line by, you know, the country standards. They don't do any of this stuff. They don't go out there and set fires to cars and bust up shop windows and do all this stuff. And their kids don't either. My gosh, if I ever did anything like that, my mom would have beaten me within an inch of my life. And her family would have come up from the from the rural Missouri to help. I mean, that's just stuff you didn't do. You just didn't do that. Oh my gosh, I couldn't even imagine. I remember one time when I was a freshman in college, I had a Buick Skyhawk. And this thing was just, I mean, it, it was a bad car. It was just a basically r- barely running, technically a clunker. And I remember I went with some friends and we were doing homework at an Applebee's in Arnold, Missouri. And I was sitting there and I had my quesadillas and my sodi, and I'm doing, and my mom pulled up into the parking lot. And we just happened to be at a table by a window where I could see into the parking lot. I literally saw this woman. She, her expression looks like that eagle puppet from the Muppets. That eagle, you know? And I sh- saw her drive up, cigarette on her lip, like Clint Eastwood, giving me an eagle stare, making sure I was sitting there at the table doing what I was supposed to, and then she left. They didn't have Life 360 and all that stuff. I would have been terrified because she knew. She was like magic. That woman knew. I think she's in the CIA. She knew where I was. I mean, she had no way of tracking me. There was a fear. And you know what? A respect. I could imagine doing that to somebody. I couldn't imagine beating the crap out of the guy sitting in the car with his wife. You know, a couple that, it wasn't a brand new car, it wasn't a fancy car, it was probably all they could afford. And then all these teenagers in their designer jeans with their damn iPhones, you know, entitled brats in Chicago, who all need their asses beat, and they target these people's car, and they, you know, they, they, this woman lives in fear of her life. That, that, these people aren't poor? I was looking at these kids, they're not poor. When you're poor, you can't afford an iPhone. When you're poor, you don't wear designer clothes. When you're poor, you don't have brand new sneakers on. When you're desperate, you don't have any of that stuff. These are bad kids who got bad parents. Let's be honest about it. And you know who's failing them? It's not the people criticizing them. They got every right to criticize. It's their parents failing them. And if these kids had an ounce of sense and this idiotic mayor elected too, they'd be blaming the parents. That's where it belongs. And these kids. Because you may not be raised better, but God gave you a soul. You're the, you have the ability to determine whether or not what you're doing is right. And ignoring that, that's what's wrong. Part of what's wrong with this country.